right, look, I'm sorry, but this just had to be done. <sighs> I'm gonna start taking this vlogging thing seriously now. What's going on? How you doing? What's everyone saying? Right, so I know this is completely typical of me to get myself a gorilla pod to start vlogging with, but I thought, you know what, I do need to step it up a little bit. I put so much effort into my actual productions, I don't put enough effort into my vlogs. So I'm going to start doing what the whole freaking mainstream YouTubers are doing. Get myself a gorilla pod and start looking like an even bigger knob than I do just talking to a normal camera. I'm going to make it look like I'm a right wally. So yeah, let's crack on with today. What's the go on? Right, so I bought myself the Joby DSLR Zoom Gorillapod. I didn't want to get the massive one just because no need. I originally thought that the screw in the end, they're usually a quarter inch screws. This one's like the third inch, so yeah. Nightmare. I thought I was just going to be able to absolutely just zing this on the bottom without a, without a ball head, but I should know these things, shouldn't I? So what I'm going to have to do is take the ball head that is usually on my slider, bang it on the end of here, even though it's massive, it's, look at how big it is, it's like basically the size of the actual gorilla pod. So yeah, let me put it on now and we can kind of see the difference. This is how I usually hold my camera, I'm on 10mm on the 10 to 18 Canon lens. Let's hope I'm in focus. This camera is bad at focus. So yeah, I'm gonna get it on there now and let's cut to it right now. Boom, nothing really much changed. Just a tiny bit of length and maybe a little bit of height. I'll probably need it. Initial faults, look. This is the, the setup kind of that I'm rocking. I haven't even got a microphone on it. And I'm telling you, it's pretty heavy. Probably should start going to the gym and working these delts a bit more. Well gone. This is like the kind of setup that I'll probably be using from now on. The reason I actually bought this was because I felt like I was slacking a little bit on my vlogs and I think, right, buying some proper, like, good gear to vlog on, well, who knows if it's good gear. Casey kind of was just the guy who kind of invented this shit, so. But now he's gone, killer. Miss that guy. I'm gonna give this a go and see how it happens. I'm actually gonna get myself a new camera to vlog on. I've been talking about it ever since I bloody started vlogging, but I'm actually gonna get myself a new one. I'm just gonna treat myself, buy one, because then I'll be more kind of, more passionate to start vlogging again, I guess. So, yeah, that's calm. I definitely want to get myself like a compact camera, probably get the G7X2 or the Sony RX100 Mark III or IV. Would also like the Sony A6300 though. Ugh. Mate, being a camera geek is not good for your bank account. Camera gear, getting all of my stuff ready. You know what I've got in here. That it, this is obviously coming. I'm going up to Leeds because I'm working in Manchester tomorrow. Um, we're shooting a video in Manchester with Match from Sport. So yeah, that's gonna be good. We're up in a gym called Gallagher's Gym, which is just above Manchester in Bolton. But yeah, got myself a free hour journey to Leeds. Cheers. You got a toothbrush? We're going to London. Do you hear that, Doug? I'm coming to London. Yo, Wagwan, right, so I'm currently two hours into my three and a half hour journey up to Leeds. Look at where I am, bros. Mackie, fucking diesel. Check out what my man got me. Right, so as I said, I'm two hours into my three, hour, three and a half hour journey to Leeds. As soon as I get there, gonna go meet up with Hamish, meeting up with PJ, gonna go over to PJ's, drop my car off there, we're going to go into town, get a couple of drinks, and then have dinner. And then I'll stand at PJ's tonight and then off to Manchester tomorrow, so. Right, so you know what is bare annoying? See how dark it's getting? It's like half three or something? Winter's crap, mate. Winter's crap. Thing is, I wanted to get into Leeds. Where are my keys? I wanted to get into Leeds, yeah, and actually see some of the town, but it's going to be so dark. Oh, well. Christmas lights will be on anyway. Mm -mm -mm, mate, hitting spots. Mate, I'll tell you what is legit though. Look at that sunset, man, jeez! I took the drone out two days ago in the, in the evening and oh my God, best sunset I've ever shot. Amazing. 
Wog one, man's just arrived in Leeds, trying to get parked in the Trinity car park. Um, and I once actually shot a film. How cool is like this train underground part? So I'm gonna quickly get my car parked up and then I'm gonna go and meet PJ Hamish and Abby Timmins. Wicked. They um lights looking good. Well go on G! What are you saying? Yeah, I know, it was good timing, what are you saying? I've got my little Casey stick for that, I just didn't yeah, put it in. I didn't, I didn't bring it with me because I didn't think I needed it. How right, just met up with PJ, we're going to find out where we're going to eat tonight. We're going to go and meet up with Hamish any second. But say, oh, space, really mate, space. Days, that used to be like the nightclub of, of the era, so. Blimey. Corn Exchange doing bits for Xmas. German markets. This building here, you remember this one? I've done my course. How you doing? Good to see you, my man. I know, I'm trying to do a vlog. Right, I know. You should be sitting with an 85 mil over there, so I'm No, they, they, we, we're quite, quite badly downlit here, so it's a bit like an interrogation scene. So basically, quite intense, really. We've got that bounce up. Yeah, yeah. we're holding a bit of. I'm sure we've got a reflector up. I'll, I'll get a reflector to reflect into Hamish's face and Abby's. Oh, perfect, there we go. Right, so what we've just done is we've just moved from there to here because this is more exposed because I wanted to talk about what we've just been talking about for like the last two hours and PJ's sitting over there like I'm, I'm bored about talking about cameras and stuff now so am I in focus? <laughs> no. no you just zo you're zooming in on my face mate. <laughs> right so basically I've come and met up with Hamish and Abby. They are two classmates, we call them classmates, at the Northern Film School. I've actually got some footage of me and Abby working on Mako, which was our last film, and I'll chuck that in for you now. Here we go. I don't think I've actually got any footage of me and Hamish working on in film. I've probably had some of the funniest oh, times got that video of that steadicam shot that you did. There's Charlotte with like, tangled with like cables and Yeah, like, oh, I need to get that. Couch. I need to get that. Where can I get that? Uh, I think it's on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> I was operating the steadicam. Hamish was pulling focus on the camera. We were shooting on the F5. F55, yeah. F55. Yeah. Cook lenses. The S4s. S4s. Yeah. F S4 minis. They're like, they're like 10,000 10, a piece. Oh, nice yeah, 10,000 a piece. And we picked up like four, four or five them and they just give them to us so we picked up like 50 grand's worth of lenses yeah. and then we shot on them that was really that was awesome that was but I mean, it wasn't like we just rocked up to cook and just asked for some yeah. lenses you did talk to them beforehand and explain what, what the film expo was going did he go to i think it was bsc expo BSC and they expo. were like oh we're making yeah he went with ezra didn't he yeah you know, we want this certain look and we were like yeah well you know <laughs> it wasn't like oh cook we have some lenses yeah sure yeah bring up pan of vision and just ask for numbers right okay right <laughs> right abby tell us what you've been working on recently. Okay, I'm just going to get all the camera in my face it's just for a while. How you got into being a trainee? Work experience is great, but don't do it for too long. But um, as soon as you get on a set, get everybody's numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So networking and, uh, like... And, and keep, and keep the numbers yeah. and message them every month or so. And the, 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 everyone will be okay with that. Like, everyone understands that you've got to get phone numbers and email addresses. Like, yeah. If you say, oh, do you want to forget your number and call you, they'll be like, yeah, totally. It's not mm -hmm. going to be like weird or anything. Like, yeah. You just have to ask. Because that's how you get jobs. It's not like you have to go and apply online and get, go to an interview. You just, you just have to get someone's number and if they think you're good, then you just text them and say, have you got anything to work with them? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So about 30 years ago, what was it? I remember talking with a guy who was operating on Emmerdale and he was saying like, yeah, I just rang up on the TV. It doesn't work like that anymore. You just literally have to, you've got to meet the people, speak to them, keep messaging them. They'll maybe recommend you for other people and get you more jobs. Yeah. You make sure you get their contact details and you keep doing that and it just expands and expands and expands and you just then keep getting really busy and work as long as you do a good job. Yeah. And you just need to work hard basically. If you make mistakes, you know, as long as you learn from them and they're respectful and stuff, yeah, I, I find as well, if you've given your number out, say, say for example you're like a, an assistant and you've given your number out to a DP for example, other DPs will say to that DP when they're in need of an assistant, oh do you know a, do you know an assistant that I can use? And they'll go, hold on a sec, we've got this number of someone the other day, they seem alright. And even if that actual DP that you give the number to 
doesn't hire you, someone else might ask him if he's got someone, yeah. and then they, they'll get referred to you and you'll get the call up. So and 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 they've been through all that. Themselves. Yeah. They understand the system. Like they've come up through the ranks. They understand what it takes to get to that point. So yeah. gonna, they are going to help the people that are trying to get to where they are. Yeah. They're not going to. They're not going to. You know, ruin them. Yeah. Complete. Help them out. Wicked. Right. Well, it's good to see you lot. Can we get like a, a thumbs up? Oh there we go. Oh, that's, oh that is so wrong, but that so right. So lovely. What bloody hell? That even that looks better on camera than it does in real life. Right, that was pretty sick to meet up with Hamish and Abby. Like nice to actually talk to people about filming cameras and all that shit that I actually know. And I went through the same stuff with them. I made quite a lot of films with them too, so that was wicked. Right now, me and PJ, monkey. monkey? Where? Oh yeah, big fat one. Um, right, so now me and PJ are going to go to Red's True Barbecue. And Red's True Barbecue is my favourite place to eat in Leeds. It's our favourite place to eat anywhere really, but yes, I'm buzzing to eat there. So we're going to get a rack of ribs and some a couple of sweet potato fries, so that'll be sick. So I'm buzzing about that, but I can't, um, can't stay up too late, so I'll be up early for this shoot tomorrow. It's going to take me an hour to get there, so we've got to drive to Manchester. That's fine, because I'm looking forward to this food. Cheese. Trinity Center, looking damn good. Oh my days, Red's True Barbecue. Yes, we're going in. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh my. <laughs> the sauces. Right, I haven't been here in about a year, but I know exactly what I'm getting. The baby backs, mate. What are you saying? I don't know. Uh, do you recommend them? Massively. Best thing about Reds, yeah, they have like the best selection of barbecue sauces. Checks out. My personal favourite is this one here. The Kansas, mate. It is honestly like just so naughty, I'm telling you. Did I or did I not tell you, mate, that this place is legit? Same thing. <laughs> I'm saying yours costs the same amount. Oh my days. That Kansas City though. Oh god, that just went everywhere. A uniform? No, it's not actually. But I usually wear like the yellow top or the pink top. Smoke in the air, binge drinking. I'm gonna crack on with some work. Check out this lovely, lovely bed I got for the night. I've even got my own guitar. <laughs> that one PJ can have, but I'll probably have that one. Well, go on. Joe Delaney. Wagwan. Not sure if you can see, well you probably can see me now. 6.30 in the morning, heading off to the gym with PJ to get, well, to have a tiny little workout but nothing too strenuous because today is going to be a bloody long day. Deary, deary me. It is cold. Check out all this, look. Just frosting over. Nice little, nice little sunrise though in the sky. Right, so, I just... Ooh, just had a really quick kind of workout session. To be honest with you, I, I focused mainly on just kind of stretching because I'm going to be having quite a long day hauling quite a lot of me camera gear, like um, mainly me steady cam, and that takes, to be honest with you, like it's only about like five or six kilos with a camera on it, but it's like if you're doing it all day long, it takes it out of you. So I feel like I need to stretch before I keep, before I do like a full day of filming. Just finished up in Leeds now. Thanks for PJ for allowing me to stay at his place last night. Off to Manchester Piccadilly. Oh, I thought Black Beatles was gonna start, but it finished. Scenes, mate. Absolute scenes. <laughs> What's going on people? Right, I'm gonna do this um this like commentary over the top again because it worked quite well in the last vlog. Right, so we got to Gallagher's gym and instantly it was like a bit hard to film because it was packed out with people, like completely packed out. Um there was other people filming in there as well. There's JD Sports filming in there because obviously all the fights were coming up. Here's me shooting Callum Smith. Everything was mainly handheld and the reason for that is because we were really really short on time and it was like run and gun. Plus doing handheld stuff actually looks really energetic. I'll put in a shot now. See like when you like kind of do really quick fast movements with the hands and it looks quite quite energetic and fast. 
Anyway, here's me shooting Scott Quigg. Shooting with that A7S, it's actually really nice because it's got in-body camera stabilisation. I can actually do like cinematic moves like this pull up here. Yeah, I'll show you just here. So yeah, look, and then I was on, I've done 100 frames a second to do like some nice slow motion stuff. We'll start up there, coming back this way. Yeah? Talk to you, Wade. Obviously, don't, you don't talk, just listen to what I'm saying. Cool. Yeah, when you're ready, Ross. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, if you start round the corner and jog round like quite naturally, if you could. Right, yeah, when you're ready, mate. Ready? Yep, yeah, come. And off you go, Ross. Yep, yeah, keep it there. Oh, and stop that one Ross. Right, so this particular shot I was sitting out the back of the car and I was using the glide cam to stabilise the shot as we tracked back and Scott ran towards us. To be honest with you, I was well impressed about it works because I thought it was going to turn out rubbish. But, um, but yeah, I thought no, this that, is the only, like this kind of shot you could only get on so a gimbal. About, about that close, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that right? Yeah, it's pretty close but... Yeah. Wicked, cheers mate. Right Ross, yeah we'll do, we're going to go for one more mate, just the tighter one. Okay mate. Cool. Wicked, thank you. Good. Yeah, you might as well reverse all the way down. That's it, come nice and close. Really close, closer, closer, closer. That's it there. Keep going. Ross. We went in a bit tighter. Obviously we are, I've, like, I've got issues here with pulling focus. I can't pull focus because I'm stabilising the glide cam. So I then decided to increase my aperture so I had deeper depth of field. So it obviously didn't look as nice as I would have liked it to, like, because I would have liked to have had it at like 1.8, but I had to keep it at like 5.6. But yeah, I had to keep it in focus. I couldn't have it out, could I? So yeah, no, it went well. It looked nice. It is freezing, but that was good fun. Scott Quigg running at me. You got a toothbrush? We're going to London. Do you hear that, Doug? I'm coming to London. Oh my days. Right, so I just got back from a five hour drive from Bolton all the way back down to Essex, mate. Five hours. Do I look knackered? So just importing all of the footage, backing it up at least twice, probably three times as I always do, so I just can't go to sleep if I know it's not backed up. I did do a bit of data management and backup before I left, so obviously I got my laptop out, transferred it all onto another hard drive, so I had two versions of it, and now I've got about five, so that is good. Um, I'm going to leave it here, I'm well too tired to carry this on.